Hi there, and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick, and in today's video, we're going to be installing a pressure switch on my well. So let's get started. So this particular switch is, like I had mentioned earlier, is an auto cutoff pressure switch. So it's a little different than the other pressure switches you might find at your big box store. Um, and the difference is that on most of your standard pressure switches, they come on at a certain PSI and they shut off at a certain PSI. So for instance, for this switch, it turns on at 30, shuts off at 50. But it has a special auto cutoff uh, feature, which is this lever here. And what this lever does is to turn the system on initially, you have to turn it to the start position and you have to hold it until your well pumps 20 PSI uh, until your water uh, system gets up to 20 PSI. Once it gets up to 20 PSI, then you can let it go and it goes into auto mode. So what this does is when your, when your water system pressure drops below 30 PSI, it turns on and then when it goes to 50 PSI, it shuts off. However, if, if you had a leak in your water system, like a hose bib broke or a pipe froze or something like that, um, and then the pressure drops below 20 PSI, if the pressure drops below 20 PSI, meaning that the pump cannot keep up because there's, there's a, a leak in the system, then this, uh, this switch would automatically shut your pump off. So your pump wouldn't just sit there and run and run and run, just pumping water out uh, because you've got a leak in the system. So whenever I do pick up a pressure switch, I like to always pick up the auto cutoff pressure switch. That way, if my pipes uh, freeze or I get a, a busted pipe for PVC busted pipe or whatever, um, that my uh, submersible pump just isn't sitting there running and burning out, especially if I'm gone on vacation for a week. I don't want to come back to find out that, you know, my, uh, my house had a leak and the, the pump is just sitting there running. So once the pressure drops below 20 PSI, uh, the switch just shuts it off and it, it won't turn back on. You have to manually uh, turn it back on with this switch. So uh, it's a, I think it's a good feature to have uh, if you're going to buy a pressure switch. Uh, I don't think it's that much more to buy it with the uh, auto cutoff, uh, but it's definitely worth the investment. So for, for your wire connections, you have uh, your, your four hot leg connections and then you have two ground connections. So the way the, the wiring is set up, is that the, the two outside wire connections are for your line side. And it's 220 volts. It doesn't matter which uh, hot leg goes to which, but you will need uh, the hot legs coming from your, your house or your source. Uh, in my instance, would be my house panel. The line coming in, I'm going to have one on this uh, wire connection and one on this wire connection. And then the two inside wire connections are coming from the load side. The load side is the, the submersible well side. So the wires coming from the well are going to go on the two inside wire connections. And again, it doesn't matter which one goes to which, as long as they both, both hot legs go to the inside wire connections. And then you've got your two grounds, and again, it doesn't matter if the load side goes to one ground and the line side goes to the other as long as both grounds are grounded to the switch. And then that's pretty much it for the install, the electrical portion of the switch. <clears throat> so again, it's basically just threading the female half inch nipple onto the male half inch nipple at the well and then installing the load side and the line side electrical making sure all the connections are done and then you're pretty much set if you're not changing any of the factory PSI settings. 
And again, like I said, if you are changing the factory PSI settings and you wanted to change your water pressure PSI, you would adjust the large spring nut. If you wanted to adjust your cutoff PSI, then you would adjust the smaller spring nut. The factory preset for this switch is to maintain 35 PSI uh, on your water system. If you want more pressure, you can adjust this nut on the larger spring. Uh, every revolution you turn it clockwise, it increases the pressure 3 PSI. So you can go from 35 PSI to 38 PSI and so on. If you'd like to increase your cutoff pressure from the factory preset of 50 PSI, you can adjust the nut on the smaller spring and for every revolution that will increase the cutoff pressure 3 PSI so you can go from 50 to 53 and so on. So let's get this installed. So the first thing you want to do before starting a project like this one is to make sure that you've got the power totally shut off to the well. So I'm here at my house panel and I'm going to go to my uh, well breaker and I'm going to make sure that that breaker is in the off position. So now that it's in the off position we can go outside and replace the uh, pressure switch. The first thing you're going to want to do is drain all the water out of your system and make sure that there's no more pressure on your system. Uh, then you're going to want to find the valve stem on your bladder tank and you're going to want to check the pressure in the bladder tank and you want to make sure that your um, the pressure in your bladder tank is 2 psi less your startup psi in our instance our pressure switch will start the pump at 30 psi so I need to make sure that there's 28 psi in the bladder tank next we're going to take the cover off of the existing pressure switch and now we're going to start taking out the uh, electrical connectors uh, on the line side. Uh, so I'm going to undo the connectors on the outside of the switch um, and that will disconnect the line side or the house side. And, uh, and then once I do that, I'll go back and take off the connectors on the inside of the switch, which are the, the two hot legs coming from the submersible pump. So to straighten all the wires so I can pull them through the old switch, I just went and got my uh, needle nose and you can see here I'm just trying to straighten out all the wires so they're not bent over. Um, this way when I do go to pull it out of the switch it won't get hung up on anything. And once I get all the, uh, all the wires uh, straightened out so they can be pulled through the old box, I'll just take and use my needle nose, I think in a screwdriver and loosen the lock nut uh, that basically holds the conduit uh, to the side of the, uh, the switch. Um, and then once that lock nut uh, is taken off, then you can uh, slide off uh, the conduit elbows that are attached there at the side of the switch.
the electrical wires removed, I'm able to get a pipe wrench and a pair of channel locks and start to take the pressure switch off. I've got the uh, pipe wrench around the half inch nipple and then I've got the channel locks at the base of the pressure switch uh, just to uh, loosen it up and uh, once I get it loose um, I think I had to there's a pressure gauge on the back side which you really can't see in the video I had to rotate it uh, 180 degrees in order to turn the pressure switch and get it completely off the water system once the pressure gauge was rotated out of the way I was able then to just rotate the switch uh, until it came completely off with no problem. With the pressure switch off, you, you want to go back and make sure you clean all the Teflon tape off of the uh, half inch nipple. And once you clean all the, the Teflon tape off, then you can reapply some fresh new Teflon tape on the half inch nipple. When applying the Teflon tape, you just want to make sure that you put it on uh, in the same uh, direction as you would be threading the pressure switch on. So you can see I'm putting the Teflon tape on clockwise and that's the direction I'm going to be using to thread uh, the pressure switch on. That way you're you're threading it with uh, with the uh, with the threads and not against the threads. And this way your tef Teflon tape won't peel back and it'll make a good solid seal. So here I've got the new pressure switch um, I went ahead and took the cover off, just made sure the inlet, the water inlet on the bottom of the switch was clean, there was no debris. Um, you just want to double check that before you install the switch. And then you also want to uh, inspect uh, the half inch nipple and just make sure there are no obstructions uh, there at the half inch nipple as well. And once you've done those inspections and you're ready to uh, reinstall the new pressure switch. You can also see the a pressure gauge in this this video and you can see where I've rotated it um, and you're basically just looking at the back side of the uh, pressure gauge um, so I, I did have to rotate it um, I guess it was 90 degrees uh, in order to get it out of the way so I could screw off the pressure switch instead of using a pair of channel locks like I did when I took the old pressure switch off I'm going to use a three-quarter inch box in wrench here it's just a tighter fit and will allow me to uh, to uh, put it on a little bit tighter once I have the switch on hand tight I can then take the pipe wrench and place it on the half inch nipple and then use the three quarter inch wrench um, to tighten it down and again you know you're not wanting to uh, apply you know too much pressure uh, but you, you do want to have it pretty snug and, and fit and then you also have to have the switch orientated uh, in the same direction as the uh, the previous switch was on. That way all your electrical connections uh, will line up. With the switch in place, I can use my cha channel locks to rotate my pressure gauge back around 90 degrees and line it up so the face is facing out along with the pressure switch. I can now remove the rubber grommets that came with the pressure switch and take those out so then I can reinstall my existing electrical connections. You want to be careful reinstalling your electrical connectors into the pressure switch because the, uh, the openings on the side of the pressure switch are sharp and you don't want them to cut the insulation on your wires. Um, so just pay particular attention to that and then uh, once you get that in um, I'll slide the lock nut back over the existing wire and Romex and then lock in the actual electrical connection to the side of the box.
Now that I have the uh, wire and conduit uh, installed to the switch, I'm going to start uh, with the grounds um, simply because the grounds are at the bottom of the switch and it's just easier to go ahead and wire both the line and the load side ground at the same time. And then once I get the line and load grounds wired in, then I'll start wiring in the, hot, uh, the two hot legs from the load and the line side. With the grounds installed, I'm going to now start installing the, uh, the load side of the uh, hot wires. So this load side are, is the wires coming from my pump, my submersible pump. And it doesn't matter where the black or the red goes. This is 220 volts. Uh, what matters is they both get terminated uh, on the two inside connectors. So you can see that I'm installing the black one here on the right interior inside uh, wire connection and then I'll install the red on the left hand uh, inside connector. And that's where the, the load side gets installed. And then the line side coming from my house, both, uh, both hot legs get installed on the two outside line connectors. So like I mentioned, here is the uh, red connector being installed uh, on the left-hand side of the uh, inside uh, connectors. Now I'm going to install the two hot legs for the line side, and they both go on the outside wire connectors. Um, so here is the white uh, line connect or white hot leg coming from my house panel. Uh, that's going to carry, you know, 100, 110 volts, and then the uh, the black, which I'll install on the right outside connector, will also carry 110 volts for a total of 220 volts. Um, so this switch is a 220 volt switch. So you've got two hot legs on your line side coming from your house, and then two hot legs coming to your going to your load side. Uh, which in my case is a submersible pump for my 4-inch well. That's pretty much going to do it. Um, I'm just going to go back through here and make sure all my connections are nice and tight um, just to make sure there's no wiggle room or anything like that. And just to just to recap the uh, the two ex the two outside that the two outside or your, your line side, the two inside connectors is your load side, and those are the magnetic contacts that pull in and make contact when the switch is in the on position. And then, and then it's just a matter of putting the cover back on, and uh, we're pretty much done as far as installing the switch. Um, and it probably took me a half an hour uh, to install the, the entire switch. Well, that's going to wrap up this video on how to install a pressure switch on the well. I hope this video helped you out in your project. If it did, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel and you like DIY projects, then hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Now get out there and create, build, and inspire, and as always, pay it forward. Again, this is Rick with the Ingrain Workshop, signing out. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching.